to its rightful home. That may have been an arrogant statement in the past, but right now they are so thrilled that they have finally won it back. And a whole new generation of Kerry fans, who perhaps are now in their late teens, maybe even 20 years of age, may not remember vividly the last time the cup was won by the team in green and gold. I expected, Jared, that it would be a presentation to the two hats. I say Mike will be up alongside Liam very shortly. Yes, that would be a very nice touch indeed, Colum. Joe McDonough's words, the GA president, almost drowned out by the enormous noise level here. Kerry celebrate in two and a half weeks they will go to New York as all Ireland champions to revive memories of the Polo Grounds final 50 years ago. Championship season is over for 1997, and Kerry are once again the champions. And Liam Hassett, the captain, takes the cup. The sun is going down to the sunny southwest. What a scene! What colour! What a setting! Kerry fans have waited an inordinate length of time—11 years—but the gap has been bridged. Championship double. What a year. Today was our day, and we won. 
The victory speech then by Liam Hassett replacing his brother Mike as also a member of the panel of course didn't get to play today but all the fans played their part and there's Mike Hassett up to share this great moment for Kerry fans everywhere not just down in the county this afternoon up here in Croke Park among the 65,000 plus fans and the worldwide viewing figures of Kerry people everywhere and anywhere how they'll celebrate they'd have been happy to win by a point but as it happens they won by three the young fullback Barry O'Shea taking it through there that's uh, Donald Daly who came in in the second half as a substitute parlayed as always superb Mike Frank Russell who got the last 10 minutes Liam Flaherty he was terrific at centre half back Killian Burns after that to uh, raise the cup in triumph. William Kirby coming up there as well. His dad, Billy, was telling me uh, on Friday last. They might not be back until perhaps late in the week. So if you know where uh, Billy Kirby's place is in Tralee, my host may not be there for some time. He'll be celebrating. Eamon Green for a long number of years and Leo Griffin has been associated with Kerry teams during their golden era between 75 up to 86 it's a wonderful sea of green and gold we have in front of us right now celebrations are just beginning the manner of victory won't be debated just at this particular point in time victory was what they came to try and achieve and Seamus Moynihan going in there underneath the uh, Hogan stand here to try and make their way back to the dressing rooms that are located under the new stand. It's been Kerry's day and the full-time score here in the All-Ireland Football Final. It's Kerry, 13 points, Mayo, 1-7. Our match commentator there was Gerard Canning, assisted by Colin O'Rourke. We're going to take a commercial break, but come back to us after that. We'll be talking to our panel and getting their views on this year's All-Ireland Football Final. Welcome back to Court Park. So then, the Kerry supporters are favouring a scene here on the pitch that they have not seen since the mid-80s and they were beginning to wonder when they would see it again. Well, today is their day. They have claimed the All-Ireland title. The man who has helped to fashion that for them, Audio O'Shea, and he's talking now to Marty Morrissey. We're down here in the uh, cash room, I think. It's not a dressing room, but all the Kerry lads seem to be here with us at the moment. Paddy, that's a familiar shot that we remember back in, uh, in the 80s. Uh, Kerry, you're back. That's right. Um, we're delighted, you know. Um, for most of the game, Kerry were on top. And uh, in the second half there, for a period, maybe for about three or four minutes, yes, definitely. We were very worried all over. We were very, very worried on the line because um, Mayo did come at it really really well for about five or six minutes we managed to, to, to i think what what we had decided and what we we decided beforehand where we decided at half time that there were going to be areas in the game when when mayo were going to come back into it and that we would be able to stand up and be counted and that that was what we did i remember walking along uh, the village of dingle through the village of dingle with you for an all-ireland semi-final preview and you said to me this team has yet to click today they clicked they did. They, they, they did. They, they, I think again, the the amount of work, competitive work that we have done since uh, since even the All Ireland semi final against Cavan, the amount of competitive uh, work that we did in training. We had a, uh, we had a, a strong panel of 27, uh, three of them who uh, uh, couldn't be, be part of the 24: Fintan, Rory Rahaney. Uh, and John Brennan, freedom. But it was a 27-man panel right through, and that is what really brought us, brought us the, the Stamford Choir. Any critics of Kerry have been silenced today, party. Kerry are definitely the kingdom at the moment. Well, I think uh, uh, today is a day of celebration, and uh, there was never a problem with any of the present management. We were only concerned about ourselves. We believed we could do it. And we are delighted that we did it. Well, well done, Paddy. We'll see you later on tonight. Up there with the cup, Paddy, I'll <laughs> So, Paddy 
O'Shea then. The Mayo manager is a happy man who will be a happy man tonight, I think. Martin Carney and Tony Davis, let's reflect on this match. Tony, I suppose it's always hard for a Cork man to <laughs> praise the Kerry team, but by golly, they deserve praise today. Without doubt, they deserve this, you know. And uh, we said before the game, if Morris Fitzgerald took a hold of the game, stand up and be counted. And uh, before the game there, you saw some Brazilian flags flying in the wind. Well, Morris Fitzgerald epitomized what Brazilian football is all about. Got the ball, took them on, showed flair and skill, and took great, great scores. And to the bit, to the even showing off there at one stage in the first half, he took a, nearly a sideline with his left leg and took a, kicked it over the bar. Great score. But he was able to assist it all over the field. At midfield there, Darrow Shea played very, very well. Uh, he caught some great ball over Pat Fallon's head. And really, until Mayo got the penalty, the game was over and buried. And it wasn't until Mayo got the penalty. Here we see that Morris is taking the ball from the side. And like, he's not even entitled to kick that. Uh, <laughs> don't know where we'd call that a Holy Mary shot. If I was uh, the manager, I'd say, for God's sake, what he at? Would you pass a quick one or something yeah, like yeah. that? But he's so skillful that he's able to do that. But it wasn't until Mayo got the penalty that they came back into it. And up to that, they, they were playing with their hearts. They weren't playing with their heads. They, was just, they were too emotional about the whole thing. They were uptight. They, did, they were all uptight. They weren't passing the ball, shooting on sight. It was awful stuff for Mayo up to that. Well, Martin Carney, I suppose you would have to agree with that. It's been another sad day for Mayo football. And, uh, yeah. well, if they were in for the chance last year, this is one they've left behind them for sure. Well, in many respects it is, Michael, but I think one has to be generous at the outset and, and compliment and congratulate Kerry. Because, in, to my mind, over the 70 minutes, they were clearly the better team. Mm -hmm. Now, it's against that their old fallibility of allowing an opposition into the game that surfaced against Tipperary, against Clare and against Cavan, resurfaced again today. And when Mayo got their penalty goal in the second half, you know, from there to the end, it was a roller coaster. It could have gone any way. And had a couple of place kicks been scored, you know, who knows what might have happened. Yeah. But too many Mayo players didn't play in the first half. Kerry won every breaking ball, won every race for possession. Sure. They, 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 they were unbeatable throughout the field. They were absolutely brilliant. And Morris, of course, in the corner was bewitching. But then in the second half, okay, I suppose Kerry could have won it by more had it not been for the brilliance of Peter Bork. And I must yeah. say his, his, scores, uh, his stays were wonderful. Okay, Martin, well, if Mayo didn't play today, the Ker Kerry players certainly did, and there are some more of them out talking to Marty Morrissey. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, Seamus Moyne and Stephen Stack join me now. Great day for you, Stephen. Absolutely, Marty. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely delighted. Before I say anything, uh, I'd just like, at the end of the opportunity, to, to say a big hello to my godmother, Eileen O'Halloran, who's uh, recovering from an illness in the bonds and should be... Uh, she half reared me, and God rest my mother, after she died, so I'd like to say hello to her. Well, I'm sure she's very proud of you today. Well, uh, she is, I don't know she is, and, and I'm very proud of the lads that, that I went in All-Ireland with today, and, and uh, there was a huge team performance today. And Paddy said to us in the dressing room that we needed at least 10 or 11 fellows playing well today to win, and I think nearly every one of our fellows played well today. It was a great team performance. Even you've suffered uh, some of the uh, critics uh, at times during Kerry football. Some of the younger players mightn't have. So obviously, this is a day of reckoning for you and all the players. Absolutely. I mean, I'm hanging around, you know, with Morris and Sean Burke and, and uh, Eamon and Liam and this. And it's a, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a massive relief, I suppose. That's the only way I can describe it, because we had years and years of frustration. And I know that counties that haven't won all Ireland will tell you this, you know, 11 years isn't a long time, but God, when you're in Kerry, like it seems like it's like 80 years, you know? An eternity. Let me go on to Seamus Moynihan. Uh, a wonderful achievement, Seamus. Great, Marty. You know, it seems that dreams are made of that, and we're delighted to have won it. This uh, was a game that seemed to turn in the last couple of days that there was more pressure on Mayo than Kerry. Would you agree with that? I don't know, Marty. I see any two teams going to an Northern final, there's an, an awful lot of pressure on. But I suppose when Mayo were there last year, they, they were there twice, and um, the pressure was on them to win. You know, they were there last year, and people were saying, you know, that they they got to the Northern final last year, and it was a great achievement. But they sure they wanted to win, and nothing else. And I suppose that put it added, uh, added pressure on them. But in Kerry, you're, when you went to Northern Ireland, there's always the pressure of winning because the second best is no good in Kerry either. Well, you're the best in the country at the moment, lads, and enjoy for the rest Thanks of the year. So. Seamus Moynihan and Stephen Stack. I'm also joined by... Uh, yes, we'll be hearing again from Marty uh, in just a moment's time, but let's uh, reflect on other aspects of today's game. Martin Carney, you refer to, or maybe it's funny, I can't quite remember, to the saves that Peter Burke made. Yeah. That certainly kept this thing alive for Mayo. Oh, very he much. What a superb performance. Yeah, he, he certainly kept the game alive for Mayo. And uh, many Mayo people this evening might think Mayo team has reached the point of no return. But I disagree completely with that. In many respects, the players who actually played extremely well for Mayo were the younger players today. There was the like of Peter Bourke, Kenneth Mortimer, Fergal Costello, David Healy. You know, all of those young lads that you would uh, think might be inexperienced, I thought played out of their skins. 
and it's with them the future rests. Yes. And I know there will be a, an awful sense of despair and an awful sense of, you know, maybe there's no comeback from this. Mm -hmm. But I would disagree with it. Here's the first save. Tremendous piece of goalkeeping. Kept his eye on the ball. Won the breaking ball. Maybe in other circumstances there might have been a free out there for a square encroachment. And here again is the second situation. Uh, a high ball once again forward into the Mayo back line. Morris taps the ball down to the in-running Johnny Crowley. And Johnny in the one-on-one. -on -one is faced by Peter Burke who comes out and spreads himself. Again gathers the ball sidesteps and plays the ball to safety and there was a third kick for Palais came through played the ball to again I think it was in, in this case Dennis Dwyer but Peter Burke spread himself again yes. and he's very similar to his uncle Eugene Lavin yes. Eugene was a wonderful goalkeeper in close situations like that tremendous player in that situation and Peter Burke today considering it's his first year on the senior team he only came in very 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 late in the year I think it has been a marvelous display from him yes. and he, he actually it was more than anybody was responsible for getting Mayo back into that game. Yeah, well, Martin, obviously today is win for Kerry. It's been a big, big day for the Hatchet family, for Mike, who's captain the team during the year, for Liam, who's the captain here today. And they're now talking to Marty. Thank you very much, Michael. Well, I had never been to Kilorglin until this week, and I had great fun there. Uh, particularly in the Hassett's uh, pub, and I'm sure it's going to be a wild couple of weeks. Uh, Liam Hassett and Mike Hassett, congratulations. The Sam Maguire is going back home. Yeah, it's, it's a great honour to, for me to be captain. Uh, I suppose it was a day that I didn't want to be captain, in fact, that Mike, Mike wasn't on the team, but uh, it's, it's great to win, no less, and uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll celebrate together, of course, uh, we can. Just as a forward, that sideline kick that Michael and the lads were analysing just a moment ago, that Morris Fitzgerald put over, what did you feel when that sailed over the crossbar? Uh, I think it was the icing on the cake at that stage, you know, um, I think Mayo came at us uh, uh, to start of the second half. Uh, you know, we came at them at, at the start of the first half, uh, through the first half, and, uh, you know, fair play to them, they, came, they kept plugging away, and, you know, it was there for the taking with 10 minutes to go, I thought, but uh, thankfully we came through. Well, let me ask Brother Mike, because it was very disappointing before the game, but I'm sure you're feeling the same sort of elation now. Oh yeah, naturally, you know, I was very disappointed to be, you know, not on the starting 15, but I think the way the Nets played today, it's just great to just be part of it, and I suppose the fact that Liam is captain as well, you know, stopping the blow, that's a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, it was a great performance, I think, uh, the 18 players who played there today, like, and there was another 7 or 8 who were willing to come on as well, you know, I think, through the year, that was our strength, I suppose, you know, pan and all through, like, so we'll celebrate it well now, right? Like, just describe for me what Kilorgan is going to be like this week. Well, I suppose the main thing is a big difference tavern, and I think we'll have to put up the pucks then again. We missed public house the night, but I think it'll probably be it's on the way up at this stage now. But I'd say it should be great you know, to bring the Sam Maguire back to Kilorgan. I think it's the, it's the only one that we haven't brought back to Kilorgan across the bridge, so it's on the way now. Well, congratulations to everybody in Kilorgan, and particularly the Hassett brothers. And we look forward to a great couple of weeks, couple of months down in Kerry. Back to you, Michael. I'm sure everything is down that side of the country at the moment. The hurling title down in Clare and the football title down in Kerry. Marty can go and live down there again. <laughs> Tony Davis, the penalty that, got, that Mayo got that brought them back into the game, it was, it was more than a lifeline. For a while there, they looked like they might turn this thing around. Yeah, well, I don't think up to that they had any belief in themselves whatsoever. Mm. And it wasn't until Kieran MacDonald, a great goal, by the way, he took it very well, because I think the statistics are that it was only 50-50 with penalty saved and, and, and scored. So Here's the it's been very, now. very good. Let's have a look at this yeah. again and the, and the giving Colin of the McLean penalty in the first case. I think he kicks the ball to someone on his own team. Uh, lands it in. Yes, he was pulled down, definitely. Definitely pulled down inside the square. But uh, really, it wasn't... Here we can see the penalty thing. Uh, very well taken. He didn't give Declan any hope at all of saving it. But really, it wasn't until, the, until from that point on that Mayo started believing in themselves and running at at the carry defence and they, they were better at running at the defence actually because when they were passing the ball all their passing was going astray and uh, there was an awful lot of ball waste and in fact there was a lot of ball unforced errors by both teams but especially Mayo and what they did by passing the ball they worked themselves into scoring their positions now Kieran MacDonald missed a couple of frees that I must say anybody could have got you know mm. and if they had got those it would have been closer but I suppose uh, Kerry deserved it in the end but if they had got those it would have been right up to the last couple of minutes but again Morris Fitzgerald caught a ball out there got it free and kicked it over the bar that was the difference in the end. Tony talk to me about, about what this win for Kerry today means in terms of let's say the football championship in Munster to begin with and obviously battles with Clare and of course with it's frightening actually Michael to think of it because I watched these young for the play under 21 in the last couple of years and uh, you could see them developing all along, but now they're only, the average age is 23 or 24, 
and they're there for the next 10 years now. They'll, there's no way they'll win as many games as the old Kerry team or all Ireland, mm -hmm. but they're going to be very hard to believe because they've won the National League, they've won 200, they won all Ireland, and now we, they've won the ultimate. I don't know what we're going to do with them down there, Michael. All right, gentlemen, <laughs> that all remains the future, but right now is the time for celebration in Kerry and celebration in these two winners of the minor title earlier on here today. My thanks to Tony Davis and to Martin Carney for joining me on the panel. We leave it for the moment from Croke Park, but of course, we have our Sunday game nighttime program.